Wow. Oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you. We uh, we need to change. I found a better song by Harris. <laughs> um, okay. I'll have to send it to you because I totally forgot about it. That, okay. That fits, I think, this intro better. By the way, we're live. <laughs> I oh, love, okay. I love doing that to you. Hey, everybody. What's going on? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> hey, what's up? Not a lot. Of, it's when? Oh, no. It's Thursday. I was going to say it's Wednesday. It's not Thursday. Thursday. We're past dump day. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah, not bad, man. Yourself? I'm doing okay. Did a lot of lawn work today. Hey, you know what I'm going to say in exactly five seconds? Uh, five seconds. Nope. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Then I'm going to say five, four, ten seconds. Three, no, two, one. Three, one, two. Hello. Welcome, five. everyone. Not your average show show. Mike here. How's it going? How's everybody doing today? It is... Um, doing well. doing well. What is it? It's the 20th of May, Thursday, uh, 2021. And we got so much to talk about. Uh, so <clears throat> we were just saying our hellos. And um, I guess the first thing I got to do is say we screwed up the other episode on the audio, which sucks because, well, it sucks. <laughs> It was genuine good audio, but I guess not. Yeah, we uh, we had problems. We uh, one of my microphones decided to die, and uh, all my audio got piped through through a different connection than, than normally this mic here. So that's why it sounded like I was in an echo chamber. Um, <coughs> but actually, and it would have been better had the MacBook Pro, if it the onboard microphone actually had worked better, because it would have not sounded as bad. But unfortunately, it routed everything through the. Panasonic GH5 and the cam link, which made it sound like complete and total trash. Sad face. There, yeah, sad face. There's that. So what's up with you, man? How are you? Not much. Yeah, man. No, my equipment's working well for the moment. You know, <laughs> I mean, I guess the only thing is, as you know, it's just, it's getting a bit loud. I mean, I, I was just telling the wife the other day, the next computer I build, I'm going all liquid. I'm so tired of needing to run Reading run programs right and it just just gets so freaking loud i mean that's yeah. the thing i mean it works fine it stays cool enough yeah but it just god just want it to be quieter that's why the big rigs got the cracking on it and you but you know there's still so. on the nzxt case that i have i still have four fans and but mm -hmm. it's relatively silent i mean not like my yeah. old system and it doesn't unless i literally go into the configuration and i say let's mm -hmm. go max performance which i never really have to run at a max performance anyhow um yeah and you remember how the old one it used to run? It used to heat this room up really bad. Yeah, that, yeah. You said it just runs cooler. It runs. I think on my so end, honestly, cooler. I could, I could probably just go with bigger diameter fans. Yeah, and it'd be more quiet. But I don't know. We'll see. Mm, well, you know, it's uh, we. Yeah. So Corey and I are also avid PC and and console <clears> gamers <throat> on the side as well, and um, we do like to upgrade our equipment from time to time, and. The next thing on the list is to to go through and do a build for for Corey at some level. Uh, who knows when? But soon, soon. Well, that depends a bit on uh, you know that graphics card thing. Oh you know, you, yeah. You, if you if you guys are following anything to do with computers and computer equipment, <sighs> you would know silicone to include graphics cards is in short supply. Well, there's Let's even just you, Let's just leave it at that. There's also in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, there is the infield and the parking area right now of the Kentucky Speedway is filled with Ford F-150s waiting for the microchips to come in so that they can actually release those cars to the public. And that's the 2022s. So those are delayed. Yep. The Silverados are delayed as well. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I, Or maybe it was the Silverados or the Fords. I can't remember if Silverados or Fords, but one of those two is, is got it. And look, I was in, I, I am in the market for another MacBook, uh, not a MacBook Pro, in uh, for an iPad Pro, the 2.9, with the M1 chip, the M1 silica chip in it. And uh, those are going to be hard to find, they say, because their new mini LED displays are based on some of that silica, silicon that, they're, that they need <laughs> for these chips, and they're having a hard time getting those produced as well. So, Yep, um, I believe it. Yeah, I mean, everybody's feeling the crunch. I mean, it's for varying reasons. We talked about supply chain stuff with that, with that but on... At least talking about graphics cards, you know, there's there's the 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 data mining, or not the data mining, <laughs> right, 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 the cryptocurrency mining that's causing a huge uh, delay also for everybody else who actually wants to use them for video or you know rendering or whatever else. Those people can't get them because all the miners <laughs> are buying them, you know, by the truckload. Which I mean, 
And and what's it is what it is. Well, we could talk about this too because the cryptocurrency market itself has been going up and down, uh, big swings, yeah. thirty and forty yeah. percent, uh, yeah. Yeah. just the last couple of days. And a lot of people are yeah. saying that Elon Musk has been the man behind it because the minute that he decided that Bitcoin was not going to be accepted for to buy new Teslas, it kind of sent shockwaves through it, and there was a big devaluation of, of Bitcoin. So there's that too. <laughs> Yep. So, uh, yeah, so lots of stuff in the entire arena of how much technology is now infused into our day to day lives, including all the stuff that we just talked about, mm. where gaming mm. cars mm. and all these other things are drastically affected by not being able to get the proper chips. So mm -hmm. it's interesting. Uh, but we do have a lot more to talk to you guys about. So um, we do want to talk about Shut Up Terror again. And there's a, there's a yeah. good reason because the audio sucked in yesterday's episode. But there's more stuff that we want to talk about in the J2000, which is interesting. Uh, then we got to talk about the number one selling vehicle in America, the Ford F-150, dropped oh, its yes. electric version, the Lightning. Yes. Uh, and it's going to be it's going to be a Cybertruck rival. And now Elon Musk is going to really have to get on his game to get the Cybertruck out to beat. I didn't think that Ford and Chevy were ever going to let him just gobble up his market space. But no. No, there's some details to talk about there, but yeah. 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 And so. then uh, lastly, General Aviation also does not want to be left out of the EV future, and they are definitely in line to do things, but they're not thinking vertical, and there's a lot of GA aircraft that need to make the jump over to electric, and we're going to talk about some of those things uh, via another thing that we discovered. So, But if you guys, uh, we're going to just stay here for a minute and, and just kind of go over what happened on Tuesday's show. So on Tuesday's sure. show, yeah. right? Uh, we went through and we were basically talking about the fact that there was a lot of information coming from Jet Up Terror recently. And one of the one of the big things that we were discussing was uh, the fact that they have opened up funding. OK, and yep. they have. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they have a big we fund, you know, page and also a couple of things. I follow the the, the co-founder CEO uh, for Jet Up Terror. I follow him on LinkedIn. So the first thing is that I really want to bring up is okay. we had spoke we'll go there first. Yeah, we're going to go there first. So yep. we we had spoken a couple of weeks ago about Jet Up Terror going in and getting these contracts with the Air Force and the Army for doing their yep. studies on noise. And basically, this is what Andre d dropped on, on the old LinkedIn today. He said, here was from him, four technologies, same thrust. I'm, I'm assuming he's saying they're all producing the same amount of thrust. One anechoic chamber, 25 microphones, test results are in, updates coming soon. What do you prefer to hear in your neighborhood? Props, rotors, fans, or just the wind? And uh, so, and that was phenomenal because one of those advantages that we've talked about so much here on the show is that that's something that they share to no other company right now that I know of, right? So that's where we talk a lot about them being a, probably a market leader in what's going to happen in the EV and, and air taxi future, right? So mm -hmm. oh, yeah. there's that. And then he's also been dropping other stuff on his Twitter and other places. So also what's been up there, and, and here's, here's something more interesting on that, is this is the, the WeFund page, and we actually were, were quite enamored to find out that if you went into the actual page itself and you went into the update section and you scroll on down, uh, we, were, we were featured on the page. This actual show was featured on the page, which was fantastic. You know, we're happy with that. That's amazing. Yeah. I uh, oh, couldn't yeah. be happier than that. Okay, with with any 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 part of that, and then also on top of that is Popular Mechanics actually has done an article on them, and basically they dropped into the conversation about the FPS, the fluidic propulsion system, and how the bladeless air taxi has its wild propulsion system. And this was by Carolyn Dilbert, uh, and she did a great job of explaining basically where we're at <clears throat> with Jet Up Terra. And the reason why we're going back into this is because. The J2000 has real specs, okay, real world specs. And when Corey and I talk aircraft and the types of aircraft we've flown, we started out in small helicopters, we've flown Cessnas and bigger aircraft from there. And a lot of people just don't understand what it takes to actually move something through the air. So I want to start the general conversation about just getting 2,000 pounds of anything to move through the air is a challenge. That's yeah. So the Cessna 172 hasn't changed its design philosophy in well over almost 70 years. It, it's almost the same aircraft through and through. Okay, That's why they almost consider it a classic, right? So when I mentioned, if I was to say to you that there's an aircraft capable of moving 850 pounds, 200 nautical miles or 200 miles, what would be your first thought? 
Well, you're talking about 850 pounds of payload, right? Yeah. So well, that's yeah. Okay. Mike's referring to yeah, the 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 payload of the J2000. Yes. And yeah, I mean, so just kind of going with the specs he's saying, yeah, this aircraft is quoted to move, to take off. It doesn't say, you know, we're going to work pilots, so we're looking we look for things for like max takeoff weight, gross takeoff, you know, all these kinds of specific terms. But we we can see that they list 2,000 pounds max weight. Yep. 200 miles per hour speed, airspeed. I would I would guess the max cruise speed or max max speed mm-hmm. uh, when in a range of 200 miles. And, and but then as as Mike alluded to there, it mentions up to 850 or 450 to 850 pounds of payload. Correct. That's pretty awesome. That is I amazing. Mean, that is pretty awesome. And I uh, so kind of just. Go with a few things here. I mean, uh, if you're new to the subject of Jet Up Terror, one of the things, and we mentioned already noise already. Uh, you know, on this channel, we've talked about EVs uh, or electric, electric. Let's ca- let's go air taxis mm-hmm. or bigger bigger aircraft like that that are coming up into the market. And one of the things, one of the hurdles is uh, noise, right? So we mentioned again back before. One of the reasons, you know, helicopters have been around for a long time. One of the reasons they're, and they're really good at moving things, you know, vertically, just short distances. They're really good utility. Right. One of the reasons you don't see them in, in that, in that like space in cities and towns like downtown all the time, they're noisy as hell. If you haven't been near <laughs> oh, one, yeah. they're noisy. A bell for There's a lot of moving parts. Is loud. Um, you know, people don't generally want a large or medium, let's say a smaller or medium lift helicopter you know in the you know across the street from them because no. they're loud they're noisy they're they generate a lot of um uh, downwash and, and things and and they just don't want that so one of the things as we mentioned was noise and uh, just some quick facts there jet up terror initially is saying that their their um their aircraft is gonna be about 30 decibels quieter than something else that would lift comparable amounts of weight at that power output category right which is phenomenal and so yeah. Oh, yeah. Thirty decibels is great, and that you know to say something like that that would be that that much less noisy at a cruise altitude of. And again, we're talking air taxis here. Maybe it's cruising at two thousand feet. Yep. It's gonna be basically you're not gonna notice it. Uh, I mean, it's it's gonna be pretty sweet. So and yeah, going go along with that, two hundred miles. That's a great inter in, inter and intra city transportation because it's VTOL, so you can go, you know, just take off like a helicopter, but then go quite quickly if you need to, and then land vertically again. Um, currently, their power plant they're using is uh, petrol. You know, it's it's not electric yet. They they basically say uh, battery capacity would need about six hundred percent more density of energy storage to meet the same milestones they want out of what they can get with, uh, you know, a petrol powered, um, power plant. So, so wait, here's one other uh, thing you know, though. Well, yeah, so here's, yeah. here's one thing though, 30% weight savings. And here's what people don't understand, right? <clears throat> 30% weight savings over a comparable powered aircraft. And this is what I mean by comparable powered, oh, yeah, right? About fuel savings. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only that, but he's yeah. saying the weight savings, they're saying that the weight savings is going to be 30% over something else in, in the comparable area. Right. That's what this article right. said. Jenna Terra says it can, be up to 30% lighter than a comparable aircraft. That's where it's quoted in this yes. article, right? Yep. So yep. the thing, and, and, and what, I'm, what I'm getting at is here, and then a savings of fuel of up to 50%. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, because you don't have to carry the extra weight. Correct. So, yeah. All right, so, oh, here's, yeah. so here's something, and when they feature this in their video, they feature it flying in Manhattan and landing on top of a building, which sure. they canceled sure. out landing on top of the buildings in Manhattan in like 1970, but that's like 1977 when there was a 206 at the top of one of the buildings and nearly crashed. But anyhow, Here's the deal, okay? The deal is, when you look at these numbers and you break it down, a Bell 407 is 43 feet long. It has a rotor diameter of, I think it's 16, okay, but almost 32 on, you know, in total. Okay, so, yep, the, yep, so yep. the thing is, and it makes a ton of noise. Now, a Bell 407 mm-hmm. flies yes. comfortably in a headwind, about 114 knots, 120 knots, right in that range, it's... It's fairly comfortable, but usually settles back in about 109, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to take that same aircraft two hours to go 200 miles. If the J-2000 holds up to its actual proposed 200 mile an hour speed, and it can cover a 200 mile distance. Okay, now let's just put that into perspective. That means, what, New York to Boston in an hour. In your own personal aircraft. We don't know what kind of fuel reserves we're talking here. Right. But yeah, if you just... If you don't worry about knots and you don't worry about converting it, yeah, if we're talking 200 miles per hour, yeah. 
and you go 200 miles yes on a full tank let's call it you're in range to do a lot you're in you're going again quick math people right that's an hour that's about an hour to go that distance that's awesome i mean wow okay so that means you could go from the east coast of florida <clears throat> to the west coast of florida round trip okay it's only 100 nautical miles across the mid part say flying directly over orlando <laughs> you could do that in a half hour right so that's that's something that you could look forward to if you wanted to go new york to boston you're looking at about 175 nautical miles Okay, just and that's with an additional range to go to the backside of Jersey. Just say if you wanted to go to the total backside. If you wanted to go, and I'm just doing my numbers on the fly right now, just to see what I could get out of these. 148 to go from downtown Manhattan to the middle of Boston. All right, and you can do that in roughly from their terms is going to be roughly 45 minutes. This is this is the actual market that you need to be in for executive transport and the speeds. And then the altitude of 15,000 feet guarantees you that if there's at least some weather, you can do some, some dodging around weather. You're not going to get over thunderstorms, that's for certain. But on yeah, most right. calm, clear yeah. days, and with this, the certification for, for carrying oxygen, which 14,000 feet would be required, um... Mm -hmm. You'll probably be able to do that. Now, the only other issue that I would have to see what they'd have to, you know, overcome would be icing because they would be operating yeah, well, in prime yeah. icing areas. That would be about it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, uh, talking about I mean, we could go on a whole bunch of stuff here, but to say to say, right, if, if you want to if you need to climb up a decent height, that's going to take away some of your range because you got to use the fuel to, to go up that high. I, I know you can in a way use less fuel on the way back down sure. sure of course but all that's lead all that leads to kind of be seen with this fluidic propulsion system because we haven't really seen this kind of thing in this application before it's, so it's it's exciting crazy. Though, it's really cool it's, yeah i can tell you that in the airlines you, you compute the fact that you will take longer to get up but faster to get down and and that's all that's, yeah, easy that's what, that's easy about, peasy yeah. but once you're getting to 15,000 feet, I imagine at 200 miles, okay, at that cruise speed, you're probably going to get climb rates even at above 8,000 feet, 9,000 feet, probably still over 1,200 feet per minute, probably in that <laughs> range. So you're probably talking six, seven minutes to get to a comfortable cruising altitude of about eight or 9,000, which on most days will do you just fine. This thing is the one to watch. I, I Now that I've seen more specs and now that I see that it's getting closer, um, and actually getting a little bit more information on it from that article and actually seeing percentages that I can weigh in on it. it I'm more excited than I was the day before, <laughs> mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. thing is it is time to invest in jet of Terra. Okay. It really is. Uh, it, I, if, if it was going to be a buy situation for these people and, and the way that it's looking, the way that they're even positioning themselves right now by sharing the schematics on their website and they're showing, it looks like at this point, uh, Andre actually shared another picture on here in the updates just above the video that they posted about us. Um, it looks like they're showing some of the aerodynamic, uh, I guess it would be, I didn't look at the patent. Oh, this is his patent. May 11th. Well, this is a new, uh, I think this is a new post. This is a new post. This is a new patent from May 11th. So that's yeah. it. This is this is getting to be a point where you go ball game, right? You, you say they're, they've done the work. So, uh I'm ex I would buy one. I wonder how much they're going to cost. That would be the last thing I need to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, you and I talked about that real briefly before we started the stream. Right. Because, again, you know, there's still a lot to see, right? Of course. Sure. But the performance figures and, and honestly comparing these to we have to when we talk about speed, right? We have to compare these to small jets, of course. Sure. Right. They're so they're right in the middle. Comes, yeah, if it if it's a decent price, and you know, aviation a decent price is still expensive. But if it's a, if it's less than small jets, man, it it should make a killing. Honestly, I it mean, should. we're not even talking. I'm not talking air taxis even. I'm talking just you know, VIP, even GA, the people that can afford it. I mean, this is gonna be super cool. I, I mean, look, if you have a short commute, sixty nautical miles from your backyard to the office. You're 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 in the capable range now of taking this thing back and forth, you know, to work. Literally, this is the flying car. This has the opportunity and it's the numbers. It's the range yeah. that they went for. It's specifically baked <laughs> into the numbers that they didn't go too big or too small. And look, a Cessna goes like 110 knots. It takes Yeah, the J2000 yeah. is the two-seater. It's yeah, a yeah, two-seater, yeah. but 200 yeah. miles per hour is fast. I mean, it is. That is it quick. Is. That is a quick piece of machinery. Anyhow, folks, 
we we are enamored that these guys have have put us up there. Uh, but the other part of it is, is more material comes out. This article that actually just came out from uh, from it was Popular Mechanics was only just about a week and a half ago. So mm-hmm. and we have to digest things. So it was May third, so about two yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Two weeks, two weeks and change. Two yeah. weeks and change, and we digest what we can and 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 get our heads wrapped around all the other stuff. But again, only because they're looking for funding, and the reality of it is, is that it they deserve it. It looks like they've got a winner on their hands. I think they're going about it the right way, and I'd buy one tomorrow. So mm-hmm. there's that. Yep. Last thing I'll say probably about this uh, also to keep in mind is, you know, try to read between the lines. And what I'm going at there is when, you know, we keep track of Jet Up Terror over the, over the time we kept track of them. But one thing we, I keep in mind when I'm thinking about it is the military's already been doing things with this company yeah. already. In relation to sound, and that's not a huge surprise, right? right. They want to keep their small aircraft quiet, fine. But this, you know, they've had not one but a few of these these tests with the U.S. military, and and <laughs> have gone well for what we can tell. So, you know, the U.S. military has some cash. So there might be some backing going on. We might not have the whole story. And of that's course fine. not. That's Jet Up Terra's business. Of course not. But what I'm getting at is. That's a good sign. That's a great uh, you know, sign. There's other players out there, right? I think um, not Volocopter, but uh, was it Jobby or some one of the other ones has mm-hmm. some things going on with the U.S. military testing. So we know the U.S. military has got some things going on. We've mentioned before. Um, I think it's is it Project Agility? Oh, no, Agility Prime. Yeah, Agility so Prime. We know the U.S. military has got the pro- the <laughs> project called Agility Prime, where they're trying to jumpstart this this segment of the aviation industry. So we know they're they're testing the waters everywhere, but. Point being, I think that not just us has recognized and taken notice here. So yeah, my 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 sci-fi dreams just I, I I'm showing the picture that that Andre posted and it's so funny because I'm filling in this ring with just hot exhaust and and imagining it attached to something and and how tripped out people would be when they first see this and go that's not an actual jet engine it's actually just the 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 exhaust part and people are gonna have to wrap their heads around how that thing works yeah it's yeah, gonna be it's crazy just hot exhaust from yeah it's yeah. gonna be great yeah anyhow folks like subscribe follow we appreciate every bit of everything that we've been talking about this company because like I said we like to keep on top of it. It, we we take our time to digest what's going on in the marketplace, but we, obviously, you know, if they're going to pay attention to us, we're going to pay a little bit more attention to them, and that's the way the world works. So, yeah, bar none. Uh, now I think Corey's going to talk to us about <laughs> the Ford F one fifty. He's going lightning, brother. It's all on you. Yep. Yep. Cool. So the next thing uh, we're going to bring him back down to earth and talk about electric. Uh, vehicles on the ground yep this one's from auto week it's about the new ford f-150 ev truck now you know we, we've been talking about this a few times knowing knowing this was going to come and you know we were also saying okay f-150 is a huge selling vehicle the best selling truck in america best I mean, selling car. They, they make anything make tons of purchase or tons of sales with this thing and we said got to go electric sooner or later and I mean, here it is, of course. So so the full title is the F-150 Lightning ushers in the EV trucks to the new mainstream. So they're calling it the Lightning. Uh, you may also remember that Ford had another truck called the Ford Lightning, and it was a bit of a performance version. And, uh, you know, I'd say that that's been a little while since that had been out. But, you know, we'll get into some of the figures here. And, of course, this F-150 is no slouch since mm-hmm. it's electric, of course. So some quick things just to rattle them off. Estimates are saying about 230 to 300 miles of range. So not bad. If it's near 300, it's not that's, that's decent, right? It's a bigger vehicle than some of these smaller sedans, so we'll see. I'll get into wondering about battery capacity in a minute. But initially, it says that the F-150 electric lightning will start around 39,900 mm-hmm. and some change before tax credits. Um and that uh, it will it will come with a uh, 80 amp charging station for your home or wherever you want to put it in. Uh, they do say that you have to put it in yourself or get it put in, obviously by a professional. But uh, that's you know that that's not part of the price. Uh, and, but then uh, basically there you go. You've got an electric Ford F-150 for some pretty good uh, stats. They're talking about 426 horsepower, a bunch of torque because it's electric. There you go. 775 foot pounds of torque. Really no surprise, right? And um, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's it, a... it goes right along with what I've said about electric trucks in the past. And, and some people also say this, too, down here, you know, say, OK, it's going to be quick. No doubt. It's electric. Right. Duh, of course. When you want to go tow something with this thing, how much is it going to affect range? And that's why I was going with to talk about the battery range. If we're saying 
battery range is saying to 230 to 300. But now we know this isn't a sedan. You're not you're not just driving around. You're going to be towing stuff. I I want to see real world towing uh, range numbers. Because, again, I'm not worried about torque. It says 2,000 to 10,000 pound max towing. No surprise, right. really. Uh, one thing that is pretty cool that I, I saw in here also that's kind of nice. It has, uh, let me try to find it for you, but it says um, it's got a built-in system that helps you know how much weight you're, you're carrying. Yeah, I just had it on I can't screen. find it in the article. It actually, you see it in the article somewhere? So it says it's got the smart hitch, hitch checklist, which actually talks about the weight distribution on the actual hitch. And then actually yeah. on screen... Unfortunately, it still has sync on board, but and we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm, yeah, yeah. But the vehicle yeah. will actually tell you how much it's loaded to, and uh, it has the yeah. onboard yeah. scales, right? Um, one thing yeah. that I did notice on the fact that it, this thing definitely has Tesla screen envy is it's got this massive vertical screen in the middle. It's a 15 inch screen. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty big, but okay. And you touched on a lot of the things, but you know, there's one thing that I want to talk about actually real quickly with you because I I am concerned about the fact that if you take the number one selling vehicle in America. Mm -hmm. And you chop its, its, its usability off to get to market first, right? Now, in the old gaming console days, you used to turn around and put a chipset together, throw it out there as fast as you can just because you wanted to beat Nintendo or somebody else to marketplace. Yep. And you knew it couldn't move as many pixels, but you just wanted it out there because you didn't want to lose your place in line. And I have a feeling that 230, and exactly what you're saying about the people that want to do capable towing, is going to be a hindrance for this. I actually feel like, you know what? Yeah. If you told me it was like 335 and then I could probably tow 260, you probably would have like a better chance. Yeah. I've been like, oh, that's about the average, you know, you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking me, I was thinking if it goes 350, 400 with no tow and like 300 towing. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah. It, it's gonna i think yep. that might yep. that might be a problem for them on the sales pitch here because look outside of that it looks great okay it, it does have a frunk which is interesting it's got a front trunk <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna throw some people when they see it, they see it yeah. right it's, it's got the <laughs> frunk and then the other part of it is when i'm looking at this big screen down here at the bottom it looks like they've actually made these dials look like they're part of the actual like non-screen part but they're actually part of the screen but they lit them like the Sistine Chapel, so they look like they're an actual dial, but it's not. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like you can page that, over them. It looks exactly like the, uh, I'll call them analog buttons yes. on board. If you go over to the left there, right below the AC vent there, that knob, which is exactly what you're talking right. about. That's typical Ford and their their cars as of, as of late. And yeah, you're exactly right. It looks like the AC knob. <laughs> the knob. <laughs> is meant to look exactly like that so that it's... It, I, I'm seeing it and saying it it appears that they're making it as easy as possible to transition to such a screen, right? Sure, sure. And here's the other one. Look, they, they obviously, they're touting the fact that it's all electric because if you look at this picture, I'll get our mugs out of the way. But they have oh, yeah. their, you know, the iPad, whatever, set up here. They got their pencils. They have, you know, the electric tools and things plugged it's, in yeah. because you don't need it's a generator anymore, right? Because it's there. You, you're just draining your car's yeah. battery. But could you imagine if you actually cut into your tailgate? I don't think I would ever cut a piece of wood like that. Uh, that wouldn't be my first choice, obviously. Um, yeah, well, but the other part of it is it's the frunk, right? They do have a they do have a frunk, yeah. Um, and they do show it here towing. Okay, now they do. It looks like an airstream. It, I think it is. It is an airstream. airstream. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah. Which look, yeah. it looks pretty, right? It's got the pedigree. It's got the Ford F one hundred and fifty looks. I have no problem with what they're doing. It's the range, and the only other thing is that I find is, I wonder what the off road capabilities are going to be like, knowing that you now have to have battery packs. What's the actual ground ground clearance going to be on the chassis as well? Mm -hmm. Because you're 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 in a different ball game all of a sudden. And the other thing is, uh, it looks like they've redesigned this chin panel completely because if you notice there's no bumper what chin panel so this chin about? panel right here at the bottom there is no oh, that one yeah, yeah there's yeah. no physical bumper here okay and from that for that matter when, when i'm and I, i'm sure they had to do this for aerodynamics it looks like unless that's just a black uh, a painted panel but it looks like you know the bumpers is de been deleted and I'm wondering if they well, what things they had to make compromises on for air, you know, uh, and making it a little bit slipperier in the uh, wind tunnel. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, we may be getting a little ahead of myself here when I talk about this, but knowing that 
it's a truck, right? right? And knowing that some people want to go off road with it, and knowing it's electric, of course, people are going to want to probably do that. Uh, some some people are going to want to give it a go. Um, now I have to think. I just have to think. You know, okay, if you take this truck off road and you high center it somewhere, Ooh. you're high centered on a bunch of batteries yes. now. So, <laughs> hmm, that's. Uh, I mean, that's obviously never good, but uh, it's just. I mean, it's just something that came to my mind, right? As I'm sitting here talking about a truck with batteries in the middle. Uh, there's a schematic here that uh, shows the uh, an X-ray, you know, an X-ray, the actual yet, vehicle. Yeah, I can bring that up. Give me a second here. I'll work um, that out. Yeah, so it looks like it has two motors. It looks like a dual motor. Okay, it appears, uh, and a bunch of batteries in the middle, right? Right. So, um, and I think this. I think my question about the whole thing in general, right, was talking about range. You had the same concern, right? And I think that kind of dovetails right into what we're talking about with battery. Um, Progress, progress in terms of like what we're talking about with the next gen or future gen batteries, not just from Tesla, because obviously they're talking about having crazy amount of range out of the new Tesla Roadster coming. Right. Nothing that we don't have any hard facts about the new Tesla Roadster's batteries uh, range and all that. But we know they're talking they're touting 500 to 600 possible miles on the new Roadster. That's not a big vehicle. Uh, but they're obviously looking at the, I mean, we've seen a bunch of articles about Tesla trying to upgrade uh, and, uh, further their battery chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been talking for a while on this channel about also solid state batteries. So I'm kind of saying where I'm, where I'm getting at is, man, if you could get this truck up the range with newer gen capacity batteries, maybe solid state, I know we're not there yet, but they're I'm not just speculating. We're not. Um, it'd be a real winner. I mean, if you get an F-150, that can tow 10,000 pounds and it goes 450, 500 miles and it's going to cost, then it'll maybe cost 50 something thousand. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, okay. But here, I mean, look, uh, this is, this is where obviously Tesla with, with cyber truck and knowing that their platform and they have a little bit more range built into their product from day one. Right. And that they're going to offer a two wheel drive model and that they're going to have a different, you know, different things out there. It's interesting to me to see that, it's a bold move for Ford to turn around, like I said, and, and almost neuter this thing a little bit just to keep it in, in the conversation to get into marketplace earlier. Now, here's the thing. What if you buy the 2022, right? And then they turn around the very next year and they dump out and they say, oh, by the way, we're going to give this model 380 miles range. Now yep, in, we got new batteries. Boom. Here yeah, you go. and now the thing is, unless I can bring mine in and drop the battery pack for a surcharge or say two grand, Right. And they say, well, well, we'll rewire yours and there's an upgrade program or something like that. I think they might do irreparable damage to the brand. I think they have to be really careful here. Uh, it, it could it could end up backfiring in that extent because, look, all right, let's say three years down the road, the range doesn't change and the thing doesn't sell because it doesn't have the range. It's going to be behind everybody. We already we already can speculate. That. We can. If this, yeah. If this goes three years from now and the range is still 300 miles going to be it's going to be a hard sell because exactly uh, there's a lot of players coming in electric marketplace and then a lot of players go in electric trucks sure and you know they're going to have more range than that by then then th then you cyber truck, really I have to know, love ford though then you have to love ford in here too but cyber truck's going to have uh, way more range than that of course so of course well hey folks it, you know and look it's but it's a pretty truck I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad about it. It's, no, I, no. I think yeah. it's attractive. It's a classic design. I think, I think you know, for what they great. for what they did, what they wanted to bring out here, you know, they they did a good job, and I showed a lot of pictures of it, the, at least the ones that Ford has released, and it's pretty. It's a pretty truck. I like it. Um, we're just going to have to see what you know what what's made of it in the marketplace, how it's going to be received, and how people are going to buy it. That's all. So, yep. um, yeah. lots of questions, but hey. Again, Tesla has put the pressure on everybody. That that's that's the only thing you could really come back from saying, and this is that Tesla's put the pressure on on the marketplace. And in a way, it's nice to see, right? And don't think don't think that at least for, you know me and Mike were we're just Tesla fanboys. Uh -uh. I mean, I do have Tesla. I full disclosure like my Tesla, no worries. But we've always said, or I've always said too, right? Competition is great, of course. And if nothing else, Elon is as Mike said, put a bunch of pressure on market to innovate, and innovation breeds a lot of. Uh, obviously new things that people can look at, but also competition. And, you know, the idea, hopefully, is everybody wins. So there you go. That's that's 100% where I'm at with this, is that yeah. when you when yeah. you have that level, and that's, that's again, I mean, I, I hate to bring up Jet of Terror in this conversation, but that's why I look at them to be yeah. in that position. Yeah. It's the same, it dovetails into everything else because <clears throat> this is how you see trends develop, and this is what people don't usually pay attention to sometimes, that there are those little 
those little diverse pieces and and I'll, and I'll go back into the console wars you know when sony said they wanted to team up with nintendo and produce a console years back and then they broke off the engagement together and sony said we're going to go it alone and nintendo and sega looked at them and said bah along came the playstation and it devastated the marketplace Okay, and that doesn't happen all the time. And these there's there's inroads that are made into marketplaces that people forget. There's a lot to learn from older com, you know consumer products and how you know cars are different, tastes are different. But Tesla caught you like we said, they've sold five hundred thousand cars this last year. That's not by surprise. That's because they did the job and the job was successfully you know uh, done. End of story. And they keep pushing too, right? Who I knows? Mean, when we talk about innovation. They they don't stagnate. Their R and D is just constantly going. And if you purposely go on the internet and search for things that they have coming up, whether it's products or also or also let's just say like battery chemistry changes, it's all there. Oh, They're yeah. constantly trying new stuff. So yeah. Anyhow, we got to try some new stuff too. We got to move on. <laughs> move on. Moving on. Um, so I guess on. the best thing that we could do at this point is, and, and look, we, we don't want to leave out the other parts of the general aviation market. And, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit this one off because yeah, we've got a little bit more to talk about here. And what, and aviation week just came out with the fact that general aviation <clears throat> has an electric revolution going on. And look, we talk a lot about the air taxi market and there is a classic design to an aircraft. And that classic design is basically high or low wing and a propulsion system. And how they work in the universe is still very much the same. Not everyone has chosen to go vertical into this air taxi market. And there's quite a few players in this that are actually working on concepts using smaller engines, batteries, so on and so forth, and different propulsion units that are still in the market to try and crack open the EV market in GA. Now, GA, believe it or not, which a lot of people may or may not understand, there are thousands of airports scattered across the continental United States that support the general aviation community in ways that you can't even comprehend. And I say that because they're small and you might have one in your local neighborhood and it might have 350 to 500 planes, maybe, or, or less, in, in lots of cases, less. But the difference is, is that you occasionally see that Cessna flying across the country, so on and so forth, and you might lazily look up and be like, look, airplane, pretty cool. But GA is alive and well, and in this country alone, okay, there are... At least, I think the last time I checked, 160,000 GA registered pilots, right? Maybe not that many aircraft, but an airplane in the GA market, some of these airplanes have been, been produced, say, in the 1950s and 60s, are still flying, and lots of the airplanes that were produced in the 1970s are in the training fleets of many of the schools across the country. So what you're seeing produced today has the propensity, and I say the propensity, Okay, to become the trainers and everything else, the future. And here's just a couple that we're going to click through and we'll just give you our own take on the fact that there are some of these companies that we know and some of these companies that we don't know, like Airflow. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't dealt with Airflow or uh, know enough about them, but they're apparently working on an electric short takeoff and landing cargo aircraft, uh, which working with someone that they're going to do it on a, off a modified Cessna 210, which, yep. which is a good airframe. Great airframe yeah. to try to, to take yeah. out there, right? To do this with. Uh, I, I didn't know somebody was trying to remake a 210 electric. I had no idea. Same thing. Yeah, this is the news to me. And uh, yeah, no, didn't know. Had no idea. So there's there's one. That's Airflow. Then, and, and here's another name that people might know. There's the Otter. Okay. Yep. Oh, so yeah. the, uh, and this is from Ampere. It's a hybrid electric propulsion startup. And they're, they're trying to make the Otter SX, which is a conversion of an old de Havilland Canada mm -hmm. a twin THC6, so cool. a twin otter. And look, mm -hmm. that airframe, the twin otter is probably one of the most classic, I would say in, in, in and hardy and hardy. Yeah. Hardy. I mean, yeah, this thing, yeah. they've been around. They've been around yeah. for a long yeah. time. And I was impressed to see that somebody was going to take a twin otter okay, and, and try to do this <laughs> yeah. with. But then yeah, I was like, yeah. well played, right? <laughs> like, I, yeah, and they're doing their testing in the Skymaster. So another good, like another good aircraft. Great aircraft, right? And these are old mm -hmm. airframes, like classic designs that they're just going to convert to e EV. Uh, so this mm -hmm. one is kind of new because they're going the route of actually developing. It looks like a complete and total airframe themselves. This is APUS, I guess. It's the I-2. And mm -hmm. it's a German <clears throat> aviation company. And they're looking at driving a uh, 
an electric one. It looks like they're putting the batteries in the wings, which sounds relatively reasonable, just like most fuel. Um, but they're talks about hydrogen. Yes. Yeah. They're doing them hydrogen, which is going to be interesting. Yep. So the hydrogen tubes are going to be in the wings as well. So that could be really cool. Although, you know, hydrogen. I'm just I'm just curious about uh, fuel availability for such a thing like that. I mean, maybe it works really well, but it's it kind of is funny that it that that initially makes me think the same thing we've talked about with some of the air air taxis. Right. right? It's just where where are you going to fuel this thing? I don't know. Um, that's good. That's a good I hadn't even thought about that. Infrastructure, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, good good call. Good call. Then we have the Aura Aero Integral E. Uh, mm-hmm. So this is a French startup, and they look like they're planning for their first flight in 2022, but they're Toulouse-based, which means they're very yep. close yep. to Airbus, which I would yep. have to imagine there's a bunch of Airbus guys working on this project, which probably they've, they've got their hand in they've there. got their hand in there so i would say that there's a very good chance that these guys will be highly successful at what they're doing just knowing that alone because toulouse france is, yep. is one of airbus's bases um by aerospace e-flyer 800 now if people don't know about the beach craft king air Okay. Oh my, yeah. The King Air is like the station wagon of the rich and famous. If you're not quite rich enough to afford a private jet and you're probably a wealthy doctor, then there's a good chance you got a King Air. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> like there's a really good chance you got a King Air. And these things are phenomenal and I I've, I've never flown a King Air. I've flown um a Kodiak, which is kind of similar to a King Air, uh, <clears throat> more of a rugged aircraft. And uh, let me tell you, the people that have flown King Airs, though, they they live and die by them. They tell you they're the best thing since sliced bread. So yeah, yeah. that would be interesting to see. And I and I dare you to go to an airport and, and you could probably sit at any GA airport across the country. And at some point in time during that day, amongst the thousands of 172s you're going to see, a King Air will come in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guarantee you. Yeah, I mean, they do tons of stuff. I mean, even like there's some... Um... I think CIA's got some King Airs. Everybody operates King Airs. King Airs. Um, yeah. Uh, after that, Diamond Aircraft. Diamond is probably one of the formidable and in a, probably the most innovative in the last 20 years in aviation, at least in the GA aircraft outside of, I would say, Cirrus. Because okay? Cirrus is up there as well. Diamond mm-hmm. Aircraft is going to put a, a version of their DA-40, which is a very, very, very good airframe. Yep. Uh, fantastic airframe and they're saying that this thing is going to be able for a fast charge swappable batteries and a yep. one and a half hours uh and it's intended for pattern training which for them yeah i think they yeah but perfect at the marketplace yeah, yeah. that's what i mean though. they've got the whole thing planned out like you said diamond they're not a new name they've been around they know how to build planes yep but also they know exactly where this one slots into their uh their business model yep. so uh, yeah i see no problem and this thing happening as long as again we talk about battery battery tech really now here's one massive thing pattern trainers take massive amounts of abuse right and the other problem <laughs> is yeah they do they they get they get slammed yeah. on they get plopped on but the other thing is pattern training aircraft the engines also take a massive amount of abuse because they're under constant load uh, when they're taking off, they're performing go arounds. They're performing engine offs. A lot of RPM changes. Yeah, a lot of RPM um, changes. Yeah. And I just, when I was thinking about that, I was like, "Wow, an electric engine! Think about the overhaul time." Perfect for that. Perfect for it. Perfect. Really well thought out. So good for Diamond. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Electra Arrow. These guys, we mm-hmm. I've seen them other places. I've heard. Yeah, I've heard of. Them. I think have we. I don't know if we talked about them, but I, I've heard of them before. Yeah. Did we see? I know they might have been at Sun and Fun also. I they might have been. It was a, it's a one seventy two size demonstrator, and I want to say that I, I they sound so familiar. Maybe. 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 Um. Again, high wing, which good for stability. Mm-hmm. Looks like the thing could be a lot of fun to fly. That's that's just a nice design. But yeah. Yep. Farrah Dare. Is that I don't even Farrah? I have read about this one already. I okay. have I read Tell me this about before. It. Um yeah. Uh I read about it. Of course, the first thing caught my eye with this article when I was looking through was obviously the design. Right. Uh looks pretty cool. It's obviously got a pusher back there. Right. Uh but mm. this, if you see, it's it's 18 passengers. This is talking a bit a bit bigger size. Uh and um 
I mean, they already already say that they're partnered with Honeywell, and they've already got Mag- Magnix, and that's there's another plane in here that has that too, but we'll get there. Mm. Uh, so five ch- yeah, metric I mean, tons of freight. Wow. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is a bigger, obviously, obviously bigger. But well, so I'm um, gonna imagine a carbon fiber airframe, especially with the way those airfoils look like they're designed. I'm gonna say that that's yeah. definitely be carbon fiber because that's the only way you're we getting that kind of. We can see lift. that it's obviously all lifting body. Yeah. The whole the whole thing is supposed to that's be pretty. threading lift across all those airfoils, which that's very pretty. Yeah. I like that. That's a nice design. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. You know, well, you know what? I gotta, I gotta write them down because I wanna track, gonna keep track of that one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. That one has. Uh, uh, there's another one that we're gonna see down later uh, that has the same kind of. Um, I'm gonna put that one in the notes for, the, for their motors, but we'll get there. There's one when you see a design like that, and 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 oh, so uh, I'm gonna go back to it for a minute because, like Corey said, the full lifting airframe, the way that they redesigned it, in, in <clears> a sense, and the fact that they're shooting for those target numbers in lift, that's that's a huge step for EV aircraft. And if they if they prove those numbers to be workable at a range of over, I would say over 200 to 250 miles, mm-hmm. they're going to be in great shape there. That's going to be like a pretty nice looking uh, design for them for certain features there, especially if you... I'll send you the main website because, yeah, I've looked at it before. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, so then we got the flight design F2E, and this is another German flight, uh, looks like designed one here, European Union Aviation Safety Agency and the CS23 certification. Oh, wow. So this is going to go flying in 2022, and it first flew in June of 2019. Well, look, that design, that's uh, that's very similar to the Diamond and almost like the Skycatcher that, that uh, Cessna was making a few years ago when they pulled out of that yeah, market. that's what I was going to say, hmm. yep. Four-seat version plan. That looks pretty cool. I could get behind that one. Well, look at the hours, too. Two-hour endurance yeah. plus reserves. So that's like that's that slots right in GA. That's like that's where you perfect. actually need to be. I mean, because yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's that's because four hours. Look, you know, if you're if you're doing a good run, <clears throat> four hours and a 172, and you know you're doing a long burn on it, and you're coming back with min reserve fuel, and sometimes you could get get that on a on a good day. Sometimes even a little bit longer if you're lucky, and if it had bigger tanks, uh, <clears throat> you don't want to be in a Cessna 172 for more than four hours. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It really. Yeah. It's cramped. You can't get up and just crawl out in the back and go to the bathroom or something. There's no, there's no, there's no glory in that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Aero Bristol. Hmm. This looks like a certification for a two seat trainer. It's a Czech light aircraft. I'm really, Im- I'll tell you something. I'm really impressed with what's coming out of Czechoslovakia and, and the Czech, that whole region in general has been producing some really, really unique uh, aviation components and pieces and ultralight aircraft over the last few years. So that looks actually interesting to me. That is a pretty looking airplane. Mm-hmm. I like that tail design too. Hmm. That might be another one to start watching because that looks certification is planned for 2022. I wonder what their range is. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. I'm what do we kidding. got from there? Harbor Air, the E Beaver. Oh, mm-hmm. get out! You see, it's also got this Magnix X. That's what I was talking about. There's another one, too, coming up. But yeah. Really? So these are the other ones. So they first flew this one. I know this one flew 2019, okay, but the certification mm-hmm. 2020. Only, my only concern is salt and electric usually oh, don't no. mix all oh, that well. Yeah. So I'm going to imagine that there's going to be a level of freshwater component and maybe life-limited parts based on saltwater-based versus freshwater. Maybe mm-hmm. some level of contamination there. Um, However, the airframe isolates the battery compartment from everything else. Really? It will probably add weight besides the batteries themselves because, yeah, um, and you, you got to keep it dry. You got to keep it dry because, look, in the Gulf of Mexico, flying a Bell 47 offshore, coming back, you always did an engine rinse every night. You waited for them to cool down. 40 minutes later, you went out, you sprayed down the internals of the engine, you ran it, you dried it out, and then because, yeah, salt water will just destroy turbines, it'll destroy everything. Heart Aerospace. Ooh, 250 nautical oh, mile yeah. range. And this one's an all-electric 19-seat regional aircraft. All right, this doesn't belong in GA, though. No, no, a, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's not GA. That's something completely different. Because, you know, when you get into that level, you know, if you're going to talk about that type of range, 2026... That's, it's a regional carrier. Yeah, it's a regional carrier. Okay. 
Ah, but I mean, here's still cool, but we'll see. The magnets. Okay, so this is the one, the e-caravan. This is the one I was talking about. Okay, so tell me about I this like one. The caravan. As you're taking a drink, yeah. Obviously. So no, it's a uh, they're working with Sydney Seaplanes, an Italian Austrian startup, uh, Dante Aeronautical. But it's it's powered by the same uh, mag Magnix X mm -hmm. that were uh, that a few other ones have been powered right. by. And basically, it's a retrofit of the uh, well, called an E caravan, but a Cessna caravan, a 208 caravan. So, um, and this and as it says right there, it's right. It's already been prototyped in May 2020. So, um, that's actually where I saw it before because this thing's already flown. Yeah. And uh, so they're they're still obviously in development, but mm. yeah, it's that's cool. I mean, that's very. Caravan. I mean, the, so a major competitor to a Kodiak is actually the, e the the caravan, the Cessna caravan, right? And and it's there's a lot you'll see a lot of these that have the the big underbelly <laughs> cargo tray as well, which mm. uh, which fly a lot. And you know, you you put a turbine or any engine in that thing with a Garmin 1000, and you've got probably one of the most stud aircraft on the face of the planet that can go in, fly in anywhere, do anything you want. Um, great, great piece of hardware. And uh, probably, if I wasn't thinking off the top of my head and I said, let's put a different engine on that, that would be probably the first one that I would go, oh, that makes a perfect candidate to put a donor electric engine on. So, so yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Wow. Oh, yeah. So, cool. what is this? The Mabusin? Uh, I have not seen this one before. So I have not either. This is quite different. Push or pull? A hydrogen fueled six seat region. No, sorry, that's that's, that's, not an, true. that's a different one. This one is the Alarian M1 a hybrid electric. A step towards a hydrogen fueled six seat region. Wow! First flight of the tandem two seat is planned for 2022. This is a two seater. Then is that that's a two seater? That's a two seater. But you know, I'm gonna say one thing. Uh, let me look up this website. Putting, putting maybe that's maybe that's the four seat. So the so here's my deal, board. right? Putting all that thrust outboard on the very tips of the engines, on the very tips of the excuse me, the wings. Wow, uh, you better make sure those things are synchroed like all the time, because that could be like, I get it that they're going to cancel each out on on yaw, but God forbid you have a you know a one side failure. Yeeks. I wonder if they're going to be wired in a way that you could only lose the pushers or the pullers. You know what I'm saying? That's a wild yeah, design. Call me crazy, but does it look like each push and pull has counter rotating yes. blades on each side? It kind of does, but I'd have to see them stationary at that level. But that would be the only reason. Well, I mean, that's the only way that you would get that to, to work. So interesting. Oh, uh, the Velus Electro. I've actually seen this aircraft. So uh, that's where the, the pips are. Okay, so they achieved their first certification in electric aircraft, right? So this is a two-seater in June 2020. This, we, we actually saw this. This was at Sun and Fun. It was. Yep, we saw yep. this one. Uh, it was actually sitting there, and I think, they had, I think they had two there. So that was a pretty airplane. Uh, no surprises there. All right, we're getting down to the end here. So what would you, you find out on that other one? Anything more? Um... Not too not much. much. Okay. I mean, there's there's not there's nothing about the inside. Mm. Um, we got the. It does look like there's six blades on the front and back of each. Mm. Uh, a cell, not the cell, but you know what what they're doing there on this on this other one. But it doesn't say. Uh, it, what's it, yeah. You know I, what? I can't pick too much out of it. Yet. I want to do. We're gonna do a little bit of investigating on them. Um, so mark that website because I want to look at their their yeah. designs. Those look, we'll do. Yep. those look a little interesting to me. So then we have the Volt Aero Casio. And this one is uh, <clears throat> former Airbus CTO, Jean Botti, a French startup of Volt Aero, is developing the Casio family hybrid electric aircraft. Four to ten seats. It's a pusher puller. Um, My God. It looks like the old Spooky, which is the old rec reconnaissance. And the, what's that? The Cessna that was the push puller. Um... With that tail design. Oh, Jesus. The Skymaster. Oh, the 337 uh, Skymaster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Skymaster. Like, wait yeah. a second. It's right there in the article. I'm, I'm trying to think of it. I was like, oh, man. Uh, by the way, Cessna 337 Skymaster, one of the loudest prop planes ever. Thing was loud. I don't know how they pulled it off being quiet, but that thing was always loud. Well, everyone that I've ever seen on takeoff and landing, I always knew it was Skymaster. I was like, damn. Yeah. Um, and then we're back to the airflow. So there's a lot there. Yeah, look, the, the, the GA market going EV is going to be big, 
big changes for them. But look, GA yeah. aircraft are probably the first places to get it done because they usually have, you know, limited range at that level anyhow. And yeah, they're usually altitude limited. What'll be really interesting to see is if any of these aircraft can actually fly higher than their original certifications, because they're not going to have to worry about nor normally aspirated engines losing power uh, at altitude. Um, well, that's actually uh, one thing I was going to go right on to that, too, when you talk about GA was to say that it's probably a good place to test out some of this technology because if you go into smaller aircraft, they can get some experimental st type certificates. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. And they don't need to go through as stringent regulations to get the bigger planes that are more commercial right, right. Uh, operating to get to get going. So they can really kind of test bed the technology and experimentals. And then when then they'll know more than when the, when, the, when they go for the bigger planes or the different category <laughs> stuff, they're good to go. You know, oh, God. so I just it makes sense. I just right? had an idea. <laughs> Let's get a one seventy two and put and put the, the FPS on it. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that would be great. You can go experimental and be go, like, man, yeah, actually, we're, we're or get it. a Piper, get a Cherokee. Put it put it on one of those or an old Seneca, right? And just be like, <laughs> Seminole, yes, or Seminole. Seminole, take those Seminole. things off. And just oh my god, that would be fabulous! I'd be like, this is great. The only problem is those things don't have the V and E for it. You couldn't go 200 miles an hour, but you could get the thrust out of them, and they'd be quiet. So anyhow, all right, folks. Hey, that's our show for today. Um, we appreciate you tuning in. Thanks everybody for the support. We uh, will continue to get the message mm -hmm. out there. And uh, Corey and I got some other stuff that we got to take care of. And I, I think we got a couple maybe launches in the next week or two. But we'll, when are we getting back on schedule schedule? I have to double check that. Uh, that too. I have to get back to you. On okay, that too. Yeah. cool. Um, mm -hmm. But hey, it's been great. Thanks for the people that have tuned in and found us through Jet Up Terra, so on and so forth. Oh, We're going to continue. Uh, we're excited about the J2000. So much more to bring you guys. But we'll be looking to come back to you next week. So stay tuned. Take it easy. Stay safe. Thanks for the uh, all the support, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll catch you real soon. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Oh, the title screen didn't come up. Look at that. Or did it? Oh, there it goes. It's up. But the title Harris screen. music has died. <gasps> it's dead? It seems like it's dead. Who knows? Are we, are we out? Uh, we're not out, but now we're going to be out. Okay. See you later, everybody. No, Bye. Saying, still actually going now. Now it's yeah, this is still it's up. It's still going up and down. It just won't. It won't stop. OBS has decided it. to absolutely the obes. Yeah, this is great. The obes. The obes is uh.